this is every red in Congo Square. They be jumping and shucking in a second line. And the juju is good, baby, all the time. Oh, clap your hands, pick up your feet. We're going on down to Mr. Street. It's a place where the food and the music's hot. A cow may say that kid forgot. So get a bucket full of us and a pint of ale. Then you can suck their heads and pinch their tail. Get a bella full of soul in the mystery. We're going on down to Mystery Street. Gotta get back, gotta get me there. Gotta breathe me some of that bayou air. Where the gum is calling the bell of the crawl. Oh, Louisiana, baby, you got it all. A history um, in Seattle music so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little interview here before we get into our jam session did you like that the Rusty Williams band it is the return of the Rusty Williams band you liking that huh? Good questions for you Rusty Williams everybody Give hi it up everybody we're so glad you're here alive of, and well alive and well getting and, better uh, every day and you have quite a history I, I've been reading about you you played with Dick Powell in a group called Backbone that is true with Fred Dennis on bass. that's got to be a funky kind of Backbone, you're talking, you, what kind of group was that? Huh? that? That band in that day was the only blues band in Seattle at that time. Okay, there so. There was only one other blues band in the Northwest, and that was some Englehart guy down in Tacoma. Some Bill. I was going to say, <laughs> I've heard this claim before, so yeah. that's a tough claim to make. Yes. Um, but you actually opened for Muddy Waters and James Cotton with that band. Could be on the, the same yeah. bill. Could be the that's highlight of my impressive. life. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's pretty impressive stuff. Dick was pretty tight with James Cotton. He it still Cotton, is. Cotton would stay at his house and uh, They're both still alive. Yeah. So they're still here. Yeah. <laughs> There's some dead ones, but they're both still alive, all right. Really? Well, I think Cotton's singing again, too. I heard he somebody is. told me that. Well, a yeah. little bit. Um, so you had classical training. I did. Thanks to your mom? My mom was a virtuoso violinist. She traveled the country doing concerts. No kidding. Yeah. So classically trained on which, which instrument? Started on violin, and uh, that didn't work out. And then saxophone, and you can't sing and play the saxophone. <laughs> so I started playing the piano, and then this Hendrix guy showed up. and uh, Changed your life, forget huh? Forget about it. Yeah, everybody else had their <laughs> life changed by him, too. Um, you were also in a group called Big Horn. I was in a band called Big that Horn. Was pretty big, that was a pretty big group. You know about it. Johnny Jazz knows everything. <laughs> we were pretty <laughs> popular back in the day. See that's right. That's he, exactly right. He's even right. got the label. You signed with a label with that group? I, th I was out of the band by then. Thank <laughs> okay. That's okay. It, it works that way. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little known fact as well, his mom, Janet, actually got the West Seattle Bridge built. It's actually named after and, you. There's and they a named sign it after on it that says yeah. her name on it. Yeah. So you know the son of Janet Williams now. 
who is the bridge's name factor, or whatever you call that? Jeanette, but that's okay. Jeanette, oh, Jeanette, pardon me. <laughs> You're Jeanette. on a roll. It's a, <laughs> you know who I am. I'm just digging a big old hole. <laughs> Daryl, 
Hi. Seguenza. Yeah. Mojo Hand, TKO, also with Stan Ike or Alice Stewart, and this is the part I love, J.B. Hutto. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, um, Dick Powell was in that band with me. Oh, sure. So yeah, he, him and I played. With, well, we brought um, um, J.B. Hutto here. He was here for about a year, and I was recording the TKO, TKO album during the day and then playing with J.B. Hutto at night wow. in Fremont. Quite a contrast. So, yeah. yeah, and then there, yeah, it, was a, it was fun. So you were like rocking it out, and then you were bringing it way down for the recording sessions with JB. Because that's we were still playing pretty hard in the really? sessions. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. But yeah, we got a lot of practice in. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, JB Hutto, a big uh, great guy, by the way, big historical Wonderful man. factor in the blues. He right. Still owes me a microphone. He still owes you a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> you have more stories. I know you have more stories, Rusty. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 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 all right. So uh, you've been around. How many years were you with JB? Oh, just a year. Okay. Yeah, he came here. We brought him back. Well, a friend of mine, Ed Wilson, brought him from Chicago and uh, met him. Great guy. We started playing with him right away. Yeah. Well, and now, uh, what's your favorite J.B. Hutto story? Oh, um, he used to love to take a bath. And he was, he was so relaxed. No, I mean, seriously, he would go, I got to take my bath first before I do anything. And so he would go and do his thing in the bathtub, and he'd be in there for an hour, an hour and a half, and then he'd, he'd be ready to go. But he, oh, the other thing is, he would play the longest running shuffles I've ever played in my life. I'm an energetic drummer, especially back in those days. I was real young, and he would tire me out. I mean, we'd do 35-minute shuffles. I mean, I was like, whoa. Okay. I'm trying to, you know, I'm hyperventilating. <laughs> but he, he had more story. energy than I did. Oh, I love a good band. <laughs>
So, Rusty, people asking, do you have an album out? Is there one in the works? All these songs that you heard tonight are part of what we're trying to put together right now. And these are mostly original, all originals, pretty much, except, well, yeah, all. Yeah, except for the J.C. Rico song and uh, a blues that we did. Other than that, they're all mine or Daryl's. Nice. Yeah. Inspired by, I mean, I, I got a couple titles written down there. San Jose, Mystery Street, Cool Breeze. Um, tell me how you get inspired. Dance away, uh, dance your way out of this one. I want to know what's behind that song. Okay, that's the one I want the story on. Well, you know, I write about uh, people and places more than I write love songs, really, you know. Um, there's plenty of love songs, and uh, I like the lyrics to be interesting and maybe tell a story. So it comes from that, and the groove is crucial. Usually I start with a groove and try and find, up and find an idea to put to a groove, you know. So it's yeah, so a lot of that, and, uh, you know, heartache and desperation always gives you inspiration too, you know. Amen for that. Real life inspiration, yeah, as a matter of fact. Bitch, so it? tell me some of your um, favorite players that have inspired you to be that songwriter you just described. Songwriting. Well, you know, the greatest songwriters I can think of are uh, Lennon and McCartney and probably Bob Dylan. You know, if you're really talking about great songwriting, I don't plan to, I don't claim to be nearly in their ballpark. But you know, they show me what good songwriting is, and uh, so they're a standard that I kind of can stand up to, yeah. Okay, how about guitar players? <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy, and then a lot of guys, too. I mean, you know, all the great, you know, guitar gods of the 60s and 70s, I'm sure, you know, we all grew up with them, Clapton and Jeff. Really like Jeff Beck. Big Jeff Beck guy. And uh, he's tremendous. He's like no other musician. He's, he's, he's from another planet. Really. Well, and pushing the envelope and taking the blues to another level. I mean, he's got blues in there somewhere. It There's is. a threat. It is. Yeah, he's a blues guy. He really is. He's just as complete. You know, he's just completely different. He's so musical that it gets into the jazz realms too. I got to say though, the, the, at my very roots, it's always the blues. It really is. I love what you do with Jeff Herzog. Two of you as a duo is magic. Um, one of my favorite memories of the Portland Waterfront Blues Festival was seeing this guy and Jeff Jason. It was about the nine. Floor of the Marriott after party. Oh my goodness, they tore up. We tore up that room. <laughs> they tore it up, but that was a fun night, a magical really experience. Yeah, so, really thanks for bringing what you bring to the scene. Rusty Williams, everybody, the Rusty Williams Band. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, Mr. Kenny, now get your last name for me because I'm going to mess it up. Hanselman. Oh, oh Hanselman. Hansel. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Hansel and Gretelman. Hansel yeah, exactly. and Gretel. It's like Hansel. Hans, Hanselman. Uh, so you grew up in Chicago and played with the 57s for most of your musical career. Is that true? Well, no, we, well, we, I've, I've been in band since I was 16 and I'm kind of old now, so that's, uh, you know, that's a long time. But back in the 90s and in the uh, 2000s, we, I was in a band called the 57s in Seattle, and we, we were together for about 20 years, maybe more. And we were pretty popular, weren't we? Yeah, there we were. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Uh huh. The Rainbow, and, and we played at uh, Doc Maynard's about once a month for years. And I put me through college. It was great. <laughs> We're going 